Welcome back to the Audio Land Show. My next guest, real excited to have, man. This guy was a regular and was really great on arguably the greatest TV show of all time. How many people can you say that about? Uh, Robert Eiler. What's up, Robert? What's going on, man? How Thanks doing, for having man? me. Okay, so, Robert, this is really uh, an honor. He's a big fan of the show to the point where, like, he's a big fan of Boschetti's. And, Mike, you're not going to know this. Do you remember when I accidentally gave out your number on the air? Uh, yeah. Robert as, somebody, <laughs> Robert as somebody else texted you constantly. Oh, really? I had no and, and oh, you really? Would, and you didn't realize this. You were you were blowing off a regular on The Sopranos. One time he just said, how you doing? And you just said, I got to go to dinner now. No, I, I said, I'm sorry about your lady problems. And you wrote back, I'm going to dinner now. <laughs> oh, I mean, you think, you think, were you insecure that Robert was going to goof on you about ladies? And you said, I'm going to dinner now, which is the most believable thing ever. Right? Yeah, of yeah. course. It was 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Like, his were... teeth just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a huge fan of yours. Thank you. I, I, this is mind blowing. I mean, I'm a huge fan of yours in the show. I, I loved it. Thank you, man. I got Instagram because I heard you got Instagram. I didn't even <laughs> want it, and I heard you got Instagram. I went on there. I write. I write on your pictures and stuff. I was texting you all the time. Then you, you actually wrote me back. You were nice. You were great. <laughs> Except yeah, for the dinner. Actually... You yeah. actually said you wanted to meet up. Yeah, one time you said, knowing. you said, I said, uh, you were amazing on this show tonight. You know, Yorkville loves you. That's where I'm from. And you go, uh, hey, let's meet up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think it was a girl? You remember that? Yes, Yorkville. I remember yeah, Yorkville. Texts, I told, I Yorkville told you that. Yorkville was a section of the Upper East Side of Manhattan where Jimmy Cagney grew up. Yeah, that's where I grew Robert up. Robert Eiler. And did you think it was a woman? No. No, no, no. I, oh, okay, you no. knew it was a guy. Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah, know yeah. it was you? No, no, no. I just uh, said, hey, my uh, name's Rob. I love the show, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to see what he would say. And he, he always texts me back. He never left the text unanswered. What, I wasn't, it was so nice of Robert not to pull a fast one on you. No, it's And just me, you know, just say, oh, my God, it's Robert. I, mean, I would have a heart attack. <laughs> uh, well, that's good. So, so uh, let's talk a little bit about The Sopranos, man. How old are you when you get that show? I was uh, 12 years old when we did the pilot. You did tw the pilot at 12. Yeah. And now, uh, from the beginning, like, you know, I haven't done, you know, movies or somewhere, it's like a one camera shoot and it's going to be like an intimate relationship. How does David Chase work that? Did, did you do a lot of rehearsals? Did you get to know Edie Falco and Gandolfini and. And uh, 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 what's your name? Who played your sister? Jamie Lynn. Jamie Lynn. Did you get <clears> to know, did he want you to know them to the point where you hung out together, that type of thing, for a while before you know, shooting? Honestly, what it was was like everybody sees it as the greatest show ever, but when right. we started, it was just another show. Like yeah. when, when I got the news that I got a TV show, it was the first time I ever got a TV show, my parents freaked out, we're gonna be rich, we're gonna have this. <laughs> and then when I met the guys on set, they were all like, listen, we do these things all the time, we'll never see each other again. That's hilarious. So we it wasn't really, you know, we never hung out, we never got to know each other, it was just kind of like, uh, we just shot it, and they never expected to ever see each other again, they thought it was gonna be really? nothing. How old were you when you started acting? Uh, I was six years old, and my manager uh, found me just walking down the street. No kidding. And where are you yeah. from? I'm from Upper East Side. Okay, so just walking on the street in Manhattan, they thought you had a good look, and uh, it turned out to be a legit guy, and he sent you a commercial edition and stuff? Right commercial. Well, what? what happened was he is still my manager. He's a great guy, but he he's uh, he's a gay guy. Right. And my father is like, rides Harleys. He's my Heidi Benches, like 325. Was he suspicious of what the guy was? So <laughs> he came up to my father, and he's like, you know, your son's very cute. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so it was... Really? Little, but then, you know, he pulled out his card, and he's like, listen, I'm a manager. Well, you pulled out something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> that better be a card! <laughs> and, uh, so... What, a, what an know, interesting story. It's, it's an interesting story in the sense that it's so not eventful. Like, people that don't get into the show business, like, it's not eventful, which makes it unique. Right. <laughs> it was, he was legit. Yeah, nothing happened for guy. six years. I just yeah. went on a couple of auditions. For this shows? And that, but when my... For TV for, shows? Commercials, movies, whatever. Yeah, anything. Yeah. And uh, when my dad went back to my mom and said, listen, some guy gave me this card, my mother was like, I knew it, you know, my boy. Like, uh, <laughs> it was because she thought that I should be That's on TV great. from the second I was born. And what did your father do for a living? He's an engineer. Okay, so and so you live in a regular life on the Upper East Side. I and... was, uh, I grew up in a one bedroom with my grandmother, my grandfather, my great grandmother, my two uncles, my mother. Wow! And they... Oh my God! Yeah, what, but what it was amazing. What is it was Island? great. What Irish. Not... I'm Irish and German. Irish and German. Yeah. And um, which is what most of Yorkville still was from the Cagney. They yeah. stayed the same thing. Yeah. Um, and and so at the age of twelve, you become a regular. You you get this pilot. Right. Now, the show was a hit pretty quick, right? Or am I wrong about yeah. that? Yeah, no, it was pretty it quickly. Was, it I mean, first 
even before the first season came out, they had billboards in Times Square, and they yeah. were really HBO was really pumping it. Like people knew what they, they had. really believed in it. Yeah. yeah. Now wh- to get because what's amazing about the acting with you with, with the immediate family of the show, you and Meadow and 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 uh, and Tony and and Edie Falco. Is you do it, you guys pull it off like you really do know each other. Was there a lot? Did David Chase preach like a lot of off screen getting to know each other eventually? He Even didn't, but we pilot, did it on our own. You did it on your own. Yeah. You got to got together. Next what? week I'm going on vacation for a week with Jamie Lynn. Oh really? We still hang out all the time. And while and you were she, doing the show, you tried to do that a lot to keep it fresh. And we stuff. just always hung out. Yeah. We loved each other. You know what it was like? I mean, you know, I love the West Coast, blah blah blah. But everyone was from the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Everyone was from New York, New Jersey, around here, and that it just helps. made everybody get together so well. And another thing was, like, uh, can you say prick? Yeah. Okay, if, if you acted like a prick, right. David Chase could kill you off. Right, exactly. Like, That's literally. right. Like, it That's was like, right. some guys would come in and kind of start acting too big, and they're he'd be gone. like, oh, yeah, read the, you know, they're read gone. page 13 of the next <laughs> script, you're gone. That's hilarious. Yeah, so then everybody was just kind of like, all right, we got to be cool around here, because if we get to, you know, Yeah, big, well, you, know, you know what I remember is, uh, obviously, you know, I, I, at the time, I, I hadn't started doing Howard yet, but I, I was doing the Norm show, and I come off of Mad TV, and obviously being... Uh, a part Italian from Jersey. Everybody, I would tell everybody who's telling their agent, "Look, get me a read for that show. I'll do anything. I'll play a forklift operator." Everyone yeah. just wanted to be on The Sopranos, and I did an audition for it once to play somebody, and I didn't get. But Shetty played a forklift. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still getting residuals? Uh, yeah, they're pretty pretty good. <laughs> By the way, he wants to take your comedy class too. It could work. So you know. Yeah, right. I want a consultation first. See if I qualify, then we'll go from there. A free celebrity consultation. Uh, so I. I remember when it was really a hit was uh, at the start of the second season. There was a, you guys are, it was a big cover on Entertainment Weekly, and it just said, "Where's Pussy?" <laughs> yeah, said. yeah, yeah. And because you know he was gone, and, and the, nobody knew where he was. He came back, and obviously they had turned him and everything. That started that second season where you were wondering what was going to happen with Vinny Pastor. Was when you really solidified yourself as a show, and it just got better and better. Every year, they just showed uh, me and Danny were just saying on HBO where, where the Puerto Rican girl breaks up with you yeah, towards yeah. the end, and that's the acting so great. You could tell you're really upset and you feel for you, and uh, how that was like your thing, and you were kind of coming of your own. You fell in love finally, and it all worked, man. It's just some shows don't work. That just worked on every level. You know? And the weirdest part for me, like how you were saying, everybody was like, "Get me a part, get me a part." When I went. So the audition, it was like 300 Italian kids with their hair slicked back, right? Black leather jacket, kind of like Boschetti. You're so not the look, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, Staten Island guy, yeah. Right, and I'm covered. You know, I got freckles all over me, yeah. and I'm, I'm Irish and German, and right. I was the only person besides Jamie Lynn on the show who wasn't Italian. And they just David Chase just said he loved the way I said the. It F-word. was great. No, it was great. We like he went with the acting part. Yeah. They always and the fact that I looked like Gandolfini when I was 12 <laughs> That's didn't, true. didn't hurt. That's true, but I mean, uh, they always say that about Pacino and The Godfather. Like, uh, there were all these like, younger guys. They wanted a real good-looking, slick guy. And Pacino got it strictly on, and he was quirky looking, but he got it strictly on acting, I believe. That helps a lot, too. Yeah. Did you watch the show as much? as like You were probably in the NFL not as much as I did, but I was, I obs- I, I was obsessed like with the show. You. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. you know, everyone watched The Supremes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, a, an American institution. Yeah. We right. had to see a bunch of them. Yeah. I, I don't know the Did you binge watch it type of thing where you finally watched it? And, uh... Uh, no, I, I just watched it whenever it was on, yeah. you know, whenever I was able to catch it. Now, That's I, the thing now with the DVDs. Like, I have people who, you know, well, my some of my best friends own clubs in New York, and right. the other night this DJ, been, I've been friends with him for ten years. He like stops a song and tells me to come over. <laughs> I go over. We had been friends for so long, and he yeah. goes, "Dude, he goes, I just watched the show." He goes, "I can't believe you, you were a part of that." <laughs> and he's like, "You know, we hung out all the time. We're outside smoking cigarettes, doing whatever." And he's like. I can't believe it freaks you out again. Yeah, he's like because I and he's like in two weeks I saw what you did in ten years. Exactly. You know, and he's like I just he's like I caught up with everything and he's like trying to talk to me about this and he's like flipping back the song on that. That is thing, odd. Right? And you probably like, can't yeah. remember half of the stuff he's talking about because you're right. You're talking right. about. I mean, think about it. you were on that show uh, for your whole junior high and high school ages. You know, yeah. I mean that's a long time. Now, so you still Jamie Lynn is like a sister to you in real life type she's of thing. She's the best. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's just she's one of the greatest people. She's she's such a sweetheart and like. People always think that we don't like to talk crap about each other on the show, but the truth is, like, there was no one who was, you know, the bad guy or who we didn't Everybody like. Everybody seemed and, fine, yeah. yeah. unless it was me, and I don't know, and they all get together and talk <laughs> about me when I'm not around. But they just, I mean, really, it was like we loved getting together. 
when anybody called us for anything, you know, everybody went because everybody wanted to see each other, and it was just, we had the you greatest time. You got that, times. too, the people you guys liked hanging out. To, and as a fan of the show, I liked seeing that, that you guys really did have that. Now, you know, I got to ask you about this, the Gandolfini thing. Like, how like how close were you at the time? Uh, did you Had you seen him a lot from the time he was he after the show? And, like, was it, I mean, how devastating was that for you, you know? You know, I had never lost anyone in like you know, I lost my grandma with a mother when I was like five or six, and ever since then, like I lost no one. Right, like, it's crazy. Like I'm just so lucky that I never lost anyone in like my immediate family, and this was the first one, and it was just it was crazy. He was like know? a father figure to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like once I turned 21, he became like a friend, or you know, like right. 18, 19, 20, it kind of came that weird thing where he's like, "Are you drinking?" Are you? And then it became like when I was 22, 23, it was like, "Hey, come to the bar, we could sit and have a drink and talk." Right. So like, right. the relationship evolved, and like just you know how amazing he was to everybody and you know there's things that people don't know about like i heard people start talking about it now but like he'd pull us in his trailer sometime and just hand us checks for this just for just ridiculous amounts of money and really? he's like why you just because he wanted to make sure you were okay and like that and like he felt like you know like they would say that his negotiation would uh held up production for a couple weeks and he'd hand us a check for just ridiculous amounts wow. of money and just be like you know here and like another like one of the greatest stories with him ever was uh my manager told me that he called him one day. They were like, yeah, James Gandolfini's on the phone. He picked up, and he just wanted to talk to my manager about me and make sure, you know, is, is Rob okay with all of his money? Is he okay with this? Is he... Not getting ripped like, off. Like, yeah, right, yeah, and he right. just, you know, wanted to know, like, or even, like, what I'm... Even, like, you know, what is he paying for rent? Is, right. is he paying a wow. stupid amount in New York City for rent, or is he, you know, going to be okay until he's 30, 40? If, you know, he just wanted to make sure that, that I was going to be okay. And there were just things that he did that were, like... You just know, like insane I never compassion, like yeah, he had a lot of compassion for you. Wow. Yeah, and I just wow. I never looked at him as like you know the celebrity and Tony. It's like he was Jim, you know, and like yeah. when he would, you know, every time you walk to an HBO party, you never know when his big bear hand is just gonna come like <laughs> mush your face. And when it is, it's like you know when I'd be at those parties and he'd smack me in the face, I'd be like, oh, you know, come on. And now it's right. like I just wish he'd smack me one more you miss, time. You and, miss him. It sounds, it face, sounds like yeah. a you know, devastating thing. Yeah, I mean, as just a fan of the show, I felt like I lost somebody I knew. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, we, we got to take a break now. But I'll tell you, I, I, during the break, uh, James, I want to know what you're paying in rent. You okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, and I do want to smack you in the face. <laughs> uh, no, but that, see, I love hearing that because that makes that that makes me think he's exactly what I thought he was. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, that's great and sad at the same time. Uh, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with uh, Robert Eiler after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.